Hello, my name is Paul and welcome back to another one of my videos. And in this video, I want to do something a little bit different. I want to talk about how I create my screencasting videos that you've maybe seen on my YouTube channel. Now, most of the screencast videos that I create are focused on showing different features and parts of Pipedrive and Asana, which are the two products that I do most of my consulting around. Uh, I do make occasional videos about other products and tools as well, uh, things that I use to be more productive. And uh, I really love creating screencast videos because they're very practical, very visual, and a great way to communicate and show different features. And for my consulting business, these screencast videos have been extremely valuable because they are a great way of getting discovered. Uh, YouTube, as you maybe have heard, is the second biggest search engine in the world after Google. And so it's a place that people naturally go to if they've signed up to one of these services like Asana or Pipedrive. People go to YouTube to learn about the different features and how to set up these tools. And so I have loads of videos there for each product that I can use to get discovered. Uh, as people start watching the videos, it's a great way of building credibility because people can see that I know what I'm talking about. And ultimately, some people that watch the videos then inquire to learn more about my consulting services, which is obviously the whole point of my business. And so screencasting videos, uh, yeah, extremely important part of my business and people often ask me how I make them. So to start with, I just wanna to touch on the format and how I structure my videos. Firstly, if you have seen any of my videos, you'll probably notice that they're pretty short and to the point. And I think a good philosophy to have when you're creating any kind of content is to create content that you enjoy. And for me, I really appreciate when um, content, blog posts, podcast videos are short and sweet and communicate that message really clearly. And so that's what I've tried to do with my YouTube channel. And so each video focuses on a specific feature of Pipedrive or Asana, or maybe a question or um, some kind of problem that people might have. And so something I like to do when I'm coming up with ideas is I try and think about what would somebody type into Google to search for help with this tool. For example, I recently made a video about how to store notes in Asana. Uh, for me, that's something that I feel people would type into Google, or it's maybe something people ask me about a lot. Uh, that's another good way of coming up with ideas is to think about what are the questions you get from clients or people that have seen your other videos. And uh, if one person's asking it, it's more than likely that other people have that same question. So that's my tip for how to come up with ideas is create content that focuses on specific features or very searchable topics um, quest or questions that you receive. The other thing I do with my videos is I have a pretty clear call to action at the start. So I usually introduce the video set up the video and say what I'm going to talk about. I say, if you have any questions, leave me a comment below because I love answering questions and engaging people within the comments. And then I say, if you do want to learn more about my services, there's a link in the description to go and learn more. So there's a clear call to action because ultimately that's the purpose of my videos is to get people to inquire, uh, to learn more about my consulting services. But besides that, I'm not super pushy. I actually don't really, I don't, I think, I don't think I've, maybe in one video I've said, you know, subscribe, like, I don't do any of that. Um, really, I, the only thing I care about is that you enjoy the video and uh, that you inquire if you're interested. Um, but really people will subscribe and they will click like if the video is good enough. Um, so that's the, the short little call to action that I always include. In terms of production, how I actually create the video is using an app on the Mac called ScreenFlow. Uh, what I really like about ScreenFlow, and I've got it open here, is that I can record uh, and create a new file as I'm recording. So right now I'm, I'm recording and uh, ScreenFlow is recording not just my webcam, but the screen that I'm um, navigating around as well. And so when you finish, you end up with a file that looks like this. This is a raw file. Um, if I zoom out a little bit, you can see there's two tracks. There's the video track here of my webcam and there's the screen behind me and the two are in sync. So as I'm talking, um, the what I'm doing on the screen is matching up with what I'm saying to the camera. And so this is basically how it gets spat out when I finish recording. And what I really like about ScreenFlow is that it's specifically designed for screencasting videos. So if I zoom in a little bit here and go back to the start, um, I can um, maybe at the start, I want to blow up this video uh, or make that thumbnail full screen. I've actually got a shortcut that makes it full screen so I can start. And then when I'm getting into the video, I can um, quickly make a cut and then I can make this a little picture in picture. And so my video will cut to picture in picture. 
The other thing that's really cool is there's all the screen effects that you can add as well. So if I want to, I can come to these screen effects and I have some presets set up where I can do what I call a section zoom and I can drag a section of the screen like this and I can make it bigger. Or the other thing that I can do, if I go forward a little bit, is I can do a mouse zoom. So I can zoom in on my mouse and I can make the mouse bigger. And so that's a really useful way of highlighting parts of the screen or buttons that are quite small. And I can even blur out sections of the screen if there's sensitive information as well. So that's why I use ScreenFlow is that it has all these really nice bells and whistles that make it really useful for creating screencasting type videos. Now, how I record my videos is I usually record uh, four each month. I actually do them all on the same day. So this is actually the third video that I'm recording today, and I'm going to do one more after this. I like to record in one big batch. I then give them to my colleague who does the editing here in ScreenFlow. And then when it's edited, I can do a batch export as well. Uh, ScreenFlow has a really useful um, batch export feature. So I can add multiple files in here and I can export them all at once. So that's just a really useful little feature that makes it a bit quicker to uh, manage the files and get them all ready for uploading. And so once the videos have been recorded and edited, I simply upload them to YouTube and I have a virtual assistant who then prepares them for publishing. So she will log into here and she'll get the description ready she'll create a thumbnail like the one you can see here. Uh, she'll create that using Canva and she'll, so she'll put in the title, she'll put in relevant graphics and things as well to just make it a bit more interesting. She'll add the video to any relevant playlists and create cards as well. So cards are the little um, fly in annotations that you sometimes see in the videos in the top corner. So that's where you can include a call to action to have people watch other relevant videos or if I want to link people to my website. So my VA will go in, she'll prepare all that. She'll even create a WordPress post so that I can embed this video on my blog as well. And then when I'm ready to publish, I just simply switch the video and I make it go live. I don't do a ton of marketing around my videos. Usually I share a link to the video on uh, a couple of social platforms, mainly Twitter, occasionally LinkedIn as well. And then I send a, an email to my newsletter list. So on my website, you can sign up to newsletters about Asana and Pipedrive. And so I, I email those lists and say, hey, here's the new video and I give a bit of context. And so that's really the main way that I promote the video. It's also a really nice way of keeping my newsletter list engaged uh, in a way that where I'm sending regular value value and um, delivering useful content on a regular basis. So to wrap up this video, I wanna end with some tips if you are interested in starting or improving your own screencasting videos. Firstly, if you are getting started, just start. Don't worry, I know there's loads of anxiety and loads of things to worry about when you're getting started, like what mic to use and the camera and getting your setup right and how to do the editing and publishing. There's a lot to think about. There's a lot of things that seem scary. You know, putting yourself out there on YouTube can be really intimidating, but my advice is just start. Don't worry about a lot of it. Don't overthink it too much. Um, if you look back at some of my really early YouTube videos, I'm, I'm super embarrassed because I was using my built-in MacBook webcam. The lighting was terrible. It was dark. The mic wasn't that great. I feel like my messaging wasn't as clear. Um, the point is you need to, you need to suck at the beginning because that's the only way you get better. Uh, now having made, gosh, I don't even know, probably hundreds of videos at this point, I feel like I've gotten a lot better at producing the videos efficiently. I feel like the production quality is a lot better, but really that is all the result of um, making lots of videos over time. So that's my main tip is just to start. Even if the production quality isn't great, obviously that's always something that can be improved. The main thing is the content that you're producing. What is the message behind the video? As long as you're providing value, in my case, like creating these useful videos, people don't really mind too much about the production quality. I still get really good comments on old videos that I've created that people still go back and find and enjoy. Another useful tip is to be consistent. YouTube really rewards consistency. And so I try and produce or publish a video once a week, and that really helps to elevate the overall reach of my YouTube channel. It's also useful for your audience as well. If you have people signed up to a newsletter, it's useful to produce content consistently so that you are delivering value on a regular basis and people uh, come to expect that from you. So consistency is really powerful. And finally, as your videos get more reach, make sure you're getting into the comments 
responding to questions and uh, responding to the ideas that people have as well. Um, I make a point once a week of going into my comments. People usually have some technical questions, which is a great way for me to, again, provide more value. And sometimes people have great ideas and the comments give me ideas of future videos to make. So just engaging with people in the comments is really useful as well. So I hope this video has been useful. I hope it's given you a bit of an inside look at how I go about uh, producing and coming up with ideas for my screencast videos. If you have any questions, you can leave me a comment below. You know now that I'm definitely gonna be checking and responding. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.